Top 10 NFL Offensive Lines, 10-6, 2016 edition. Miami Dolphins Offensive Line. Houston Texans Offensive Line. Kansas City Chiefs Offensive Line. New York Giants Offensive Line. Okay, number 10, Baltimore Ravens Offensive Line. So we start off this list with Baltimore. Um, and I will tell you that this team might be worse. This team might even not even be on this list next year just because they've literally lost a lot of guys on this line, which equals to Joe Flacco having it probably a worse season, which equals to Baltimore probably not being that great unless unless there's some upside. Again, there's always upside with young guys. But first, let's take a look at who they lost. They lost their right tackle, Ricky Wagner. They lost their center, Jeremy Zuda. And they lost a right guard, Vlad Ducasse. So right now, their line looks like this. Left tackle, Ronnie Stanley, age 23. He's got a three-year, $15.36 million contract. Left guard, Alex Lewis. He's age 23, three years, $2.1 million. Center, Ryan Jansen, 26, one year, $1.79 million. Marshall Yonda, right guard, 32, three years, $23.94 million. And right tackle, James Hurst, 25, one year, $1.2 million. Again, age is not the problem. They're very young, very good line, fresh. The only problem I have is they're not that experienced. So what will they do with that against DNs and D tackles and, and defenses that are very skilled, that are ready to build and ready to become a Super Bowl team? We'll see. Uh, right now they are 10th because of what they did last year. Um, and I think that potential to be pretty well, um, well off. It's just their line is super young, so I don't know how they're going to do. Now, last year, they ranked 17th in yards, 21st in points for them, and they were 17th in turnovers. They were 21st in first downs. Again, uh, not fantastic, but not terrible at the same time. So they were able to really kind of make sure that the offense was flowing a bit. But like I said, it did make them lose games, and they got an 8-rate record because when they had to verse you know, tougher opponents, they just could not really seem to really pull off that kind of uh, energy at the line. Uh, Marshall is great, Zudo is great, but other than that, like, you know, their their line is not extremely gifted, uh, so they have a lot of work to do during the offseason with this line uh, because they gave Joe Flacco, Joe Flacco got sacked 33 times. So that's a problem. Um, and, uh, again, no other QB really started played much not really Ryan Mallett didn't get you know intercepted at all or sacked because he didn't really he did get intercepted once sorry not sacked uh, because he just didn't play much um, just a Tucker had like one attempt but uh, other than that yeah um, they need to improve the line they need to get better as a as a whole but yeah this line needs work but uh, they deserve to be number 10 that's where they'll be right now Number nine, Chicago Bears offensive line. This line has a lot of potential to be even higher. It's a very scary line, I would say. Jordan Howard has pretty good help. He will have some holes in there. Again, it's just the development of this is why Jordan Howard um, had to take a little more load off um, for himself. He had to kind of find holes himself because at times this line would kind of be a little dysfunctional. Um, but it's okay because they're going to get even better next year. I think they're just going to get even better, and I think this will be this could be a top five line actually, um, which can end up being a Chicago team that can actually get to the playoffs. Maybe you never know. Again, they have to improve on everything all around, not just the line. The line is very exceptionally very well built. No one is lost. They kept the same guys, and you're looking at um, left tackle Charles Leno, Charles Leno Jr. He's 25, one year, $566,628. Left guard is Josh Sitton, 31 years old, two years, $14 million. Center, Cody Whitehair, 25, three years, $3.18 million. Right guard, Kyle Long, 28, five years, $50 million. And Bobby Massey, right tackle, 28 years of age, two years, $12 million. So this team is well off right now. Um, they will definitely have to pay their guys, which is Charles Leno. Um, and other than that, they're they're pretty pretty well off right now um, to make a run there. Um, we'll see how Trubisky kind of we'll see how that goes. I think their their line will definitely have enough um, so Trubisky doesn't get pressured enough. Um, hopefully, I don't want him to get pressured at all. 
Um, and uh, I think they'll I think they'll exceed that. Now, their ranks last year, reason they're number nine, 28 in points, 15 in yards, 30th in turnovers, 17 in first downs. So, like I said, they need to kind of adjust. They have to get, you know, yes, they're in the top 15 in yards, but that doesn't matter at all. They really need to start actually, like, getting into the top 10s if they really want to be a line that produces a lot of offense. Um, and again, they were able to get Jake Cutler was sacked 17 times, Hoyer 4, Barkley 6. Um, not terrible. Jake Cutler, not great. Uh, five games started and got sacked 17 times. I think it could blame both the O-line but also him because he's also a quarterback that isn't particularly as gifted as we thought he would be. Uh, but it's okay. Um, I think this just this line will learn. This line will get better, and I I believe this line will be a uh, a uh, a force to be reckoned with in the north. So uh, yeah, this line is scary in my opinion, and they deserve to be number nine. Number eight, Philadelphia Eagles offensive line. Philadelphia Eagles offensive line is uh, one of the actually four NFC West teams on this list. Yes, all NFC West teams are on this list. Um, or sorry, wow, I am totally wrong. Um, three out of the four um, New York Giants are out of this list. They were an honorable mention. They need to get a little bit uh, better in terms of what they do as a line and try to improve. Um, hopefully, uh, I would say a long playoff run for them, but we'll have to see. Uh, they just need to make sure that they have enough um, enough protection for Eli uh, so his... His magic can work. Uh, I think he's still got some, some magic in him at 36 now. Uh, but anyway, Philadelphia is the first out of the three NFC West teams on this list. First of all, Philadelphia, great, great team. They got some pieces. They got some talent. They need to know how to work with it now, though. Wentz, how will he do? And I think a big portion of every single team is the line. And I think the line is very well thought out, very well uh you know, kind of assembled for uh, for Philly. They lost right guard Allen Barb, but I still think they'll be fine. They got left tackle Jason Peters, the future Hall of Famer most likely, 35 years of age, three years, $27.75 million. Left guard Isaac Sumalu, 23, three years, $2.4 million. Center Jason Kels, 29, four years, $25 million. Right guard Brandon Brooks, 27, four years, $32 million. And right tackle Lane Johnson, 27, five years, 56.26 million. So they have a very good line with a lot of money spent on this line. So I would definitely have to guess that this line will be very well, um, just very, very well played, very well assembled, and they will play really well with each other. And I think this line will succeed great things this year, um, and as well as they did last year, where um, it wasn't too bad. Um, they just need to improve. They continuously need to improve and get better. And I think this line will be um, top five, maybe. Uh, so last year they were 16th in points, 22nd in yards, 14th in turnovers, and 13th in first downs. So they're right there. They're like top 15 in first downs. They're right there, almost in the top 10. Almost in the top 10 turnovers. Didn't, didn't commit too many. Uh, the only thing that's questioning, they need to put more points on the board, which obviously needs to be running back, receivers, quarterback, you know, they need to obviously have that partial of a blame. But, like I said, they also need to de be better at yards. 22nd in the league is not great. So this line needs to make sure that they're ready to, to protect. They're ready to make some space, make some holes for the running back. They're going to make sure that they do that. I think so. I think so, and that's why I got him at on this list at number 8. And uh, we'll see. Um, I believe in them. We'll see how they do, though. Number seven, Tennessee Titans offensive line. This is going to be a line that's going to be top five by the end of the next year. Guarantee you that will be a thing. They are young. They are ready. They are just a lot better. Um, some guys are just going to be more experienced with it, you know, with being in the NFL and everything, protecting Mariota, protecting Murray. They're able to get a lot of things done in that. So, in my opinion, having Murray, having Mariota, having weapons, and having a great line, yeah, I think this is a playoff team, ready to be born. Um, and let's just take a look. First of all, they have 26-year-old left tackle Taylor Luan, two years, $5.74 million. Left guard Quentin Spain, 26, one year, $527,000. Uh, 
Center, Ben Jones, 28, three years, $13.13 million. Right guard, Josh Klein, 27, one year, $1.65 million. And right tackle, Jack Conklin, 22 years old, three years, $11.92 million. They do not lose anyone on this line. Their line is pretty much secure except Klein and Spain, so they might as well get to signing on them, or maybe they'll just uh, rather build from the draft. Not sure, but I just know that this is uh, a line built to win now and they're ready to go now and uh no stop in this line i think this line will, will make mariota's experience and demarco's experience well worth it i think this team is going to the playoffs and i think this line can carry them to a possible afc championship in the future for sure they have a really good line so very skillful very young very scary um and uh as you can see their stats from this past year 14 points 11th in yards, 11th in turnovers, and 18th in first downs. Again, first downs need to be more up, obviously. Yards, they're so close to the top 10 in that. They're almost in the top 10 in points, and they're almost in the top 10 in turnovers. They just don't commit turnovers. They're able to just protect them. Mariota, again, was protected. He got sacked 23 times. That could definitely be lowered. And Castle five times when Mariota was absent. Um, but as you can see, though, this is a line that's a force to be reckoned with and I believe this line is going to be top top three I would say by the end of this this year if they all are healthy and perform well you can see this Tennessee Titans maybe having a deep playoff run number six Pittsburgh Steelers offensive line so the Pittsburgh Steelers offensive line is one of the best in the game that's for damn sure they are the best in the game now, it's helped Le'Veon Bell, it's helped Big Ben, it's helped Antonio Brown. When you look at it, you need to give credit where credit is due. The Pittsburgh Steelers are a fantastic team due to stars, but also due to that line just protecting everyone. First of all, good news for them. None of the line is at all um, misplaced. They didn't lose anyone. They're all put together the same way. So, very good news for them in terms of what they would want to do. If this is Big Ben's last year, this may be their last chance to get to the Super Bowl with Big Ben, of course. If not, that's good. I still think this has a bright future out there in Pittsburgh. I think they will have multiple chances of winning a Super Bowl. Multiple times they'll be in the playoffs. Multiple times I can see them in the AFC Championship. So I do see them rolling around as pretty good contenders, in my opinion, with the New England Patriots, of course, out there in the AFC. So let's first take a look at their line. It's got left tackle Alejandro Villanueva. 28 years old, four years, 24 million. Left guard, Ramon Foster, 31, two years, 6.4 million. Center, Maurice Marquise Pouncey, 28 years old, three years, 26.45 mil. Right guard, David Castro, 27, five years, 50 million. And right tackle, Marcus Gilbert, 29, three years, 18.49 million. All I see right now is a lot of guys locked up for long term. Um, and if it's not so long term, at least no one is going to be able to um, really get out uh, by the end of this year is what's the positivity of it. Um, so I do see Pittsburgh going pretty far. Um, I really do. And I really enjoy this line. This line is very, it's big. It's, it's ready to just, uh, it's ready to, to create space to protect and, you know, to get out some holes in there and just make sure Big Ben's got time. Now, what do they do this year? Well, first of all, 10th in points, 7 in yards, 11 in turnovers, and they were 12th in first downs. So they are pretty good at where they want to be. They could definitely get a little bit more higher in first downs, but you're looking at points there in top 10, yards there in top 10, you know, turnovers, 11. At least they're all in the 15 range, so that's very good. Of course, there's always room for improvement from the line, but overall, very well uh, very good kind of, uh, not kind of, very great line. I really like this line a lot. Now, they had 17 sacks on Big Ben and 4 on Landry Jones. Overall, total of 21. So not that great, but not too bad. It's not like they had 40, they didn't have any 30, they had just 21. So it's definitely some good improvement, definitely some positivity with this line. I really enjoy watching this line. I know people really don't know much about linemen. They think it's just it's kind of boring. But for me, I like to watch uh, kind of to see how they do because uh, everyone should be credited 
it's a team sport, so you know. But anyway, yes, they are sixth on this list.